Hello, and, uh, today in Substance Designer we're going to make a, uh, a brush alpha for Substance Painter. It's very straightforward. Uh, we just go File, New Package and Substance Graph. And I'm going to pick an empty graph because I don't really want any outputs except my alpha. And then I'm going to click OK. Once I've got that in, I can right, whoops, not right click, press space and type in output to get an output node. And this will be, well, it, it'll be our output. We don't need to set anything. Uh, but what we do need is to tell the graph what sort of thing we're going to export. Now, if you double click on the uh, a blank piece of the graph, you'll get uh, into the graph properties and under attributes, uh, we've got an identifier. Uh, we'll call it new alpha for the moment and uh, the type. Now the type uh, will come in as standard material uh, but what we can actually do is hit unspecified and then when we import it in Substance um, Painter it will ask us what it is and then we can tell it. So uh, that's it for the, the setup. <laughs> I don't know why I said it like that. Setup. Uh, now we just need to add something. So what we're targeting is just to have a black and white output. So we're going to pick a shape to start with. So if I press space and type in shape, uh, we'll pick out a shape. There we go, it's a shape node. And we're going to uh, pick a different kind of shape. I think we'll probably pick a, a parab uh, paraboloid. So with this shape we can scale it we can squeeze it in x and y so i'm just going to alter its kind of dimensions a little bit to get a slightly more interesting uh, shape out of it and then all we need to do is mess it up basically now a good way to add kind of variation is to use a warp so if i press space and warp uh, there's a few options, uh, but I'm going to go for just the standard board to start with. And if I plug that in, and you'll notice my intensity is 1 and nothing has happened. Because we haven't told it where to warp, we need to give it an input. So we want a noise. So if I press space and uh, type in, say, noise, <laughs> we'll get lots of noises in. And uh, I just want a, a fairly standard noise, really. Uh, let's pick a Dirt 4, just for fun. Now, this is quite intense and quite grainy. Uh, so it's going to warp a lot. So if I plug that in and double click there, you'll see it goes nuts. So what we can do is either change the scale here, uh, which isn't going to work because it's just going to make it much, much... Um, finer or I can turn down the intensity. Now I've picked that one and while I'm sure it's a lovely choice uh, it's not the best choice in the world because I can't change its scale down. Uh, if I say type in a negative number here um, it just kind of wipes it out uh, even if a smaller negative number. So not the best choice. So if I just delete that out and press uh, space and uh, purling, uh, we'll get some other noises up. And purling noise is quite a nice generic one to use. And I'll just plug that in there. And you can see it's already come in. And my intensity is quite low, so it's not doing very much. It just looks dimpled, a bit like a very chewed golf ball. And if I increase that up, obviously the intensity will get higher. But now I can up and down my scale. So if I bring my scale down, I'll get much sort of broader areas of uh, noise. And if I really increase it, I'll get much smaller areas. So I want just to change it a bit, something like that. There we go. So it'd be no fun if we didn't, you know, do other things. So I'm going to warp it some more. So if I left click and drag this out, it's going to uh, create a noodle for me. And when I let go, it will ask me what node I want to put on there. And this time we'll use a directional warp. 
Now directional warp does a very similar thing, but it gives us the chance to give the um, the warp a direction. So uh, let's have another noise, and I'm going to pick something else. Let's try this lovely creased one here, and let's pop that in, and increase our intensity. And you might see it moving around a bit, um, and that's because that's what a directional warp does. But this creases is kind of all grey really, there's not a lot of difference in it. So I'm going to delete that one out and we'll pick something a little bit more, uh, how can I put it, polarised. Let's try a scrunch map. So here we've got a lot of black, some white and some grey patches and there you can see we're getting a much more kind of uh, intense change. If I increase it you'll see that it's almost masking it out if that makes sense. So I'm going to pull back from that and then I'm just going to change the degrees. So this is the extra option we get here. We can change the direction. So if I put this down to zero and then type in 90 you'll see it's pointing upwards now. And if I do 180 it's going left to right and then 270 goes top to bottom. So you can have a rough idea of which way your direction is going just by knowing, you know, the points of the compass essentially. Um, so that's that and that's lovely but it's still not really great. So let's warp it some more. Uh, well let's blur it actually. So I want to take some of this uh, quite harsh detail out. Uh, so I'm going to put a blur in and uh, one of my favourite nodes to play with is the slope blur grayscale. So if I plug that in nothing will happen because we need to tell it where to do the job. And if I reuse this one it should blur those areas but it doesn't really look like a blur if that makes sense. It's more of a, a pattern and the more you increase it the you know, worse or finer it gets. See, that's quite a nice pattern, but not in this case because it looks more like an asteroid uh, where it's, uh, you know, uh, where it's within rather than what I want, which is more of a generic kind of noise. So let's delete that one and try a different. So let's pop in another pearl in. Uh, where is it? It's here somewhere. Let's pop that in there. And now you see that it's uh, almost faceted and we can change that down and up depending upon what we want to do with it. So as it comes out, I mean this is reminding me of a almost a very complicated flower shape which is not a bad thing. Uh, I think I could probably use that in places. So I'm going to connect that to my output. So this output then is going to be you know, what we end up with you know, in substance. Uh, if you wanted to put a fall off on that uh, we could put in a um, another shape. Oops, sorry, brain froze there for a second. Fortunately it doesn't freeze for very long, just long enough to make me look like an idiot. Uh, and we'll put a paraboloid in there and then for space and blend and now we're going to multiply these together so let's actually subtract is the uh, one I really wanted uh, but I've got these in the wrong, <laughs> wrong places so if I select those two noodles and press X it will flip them around is it subtract? Perhaps it is multiply. Yes, it is multiply. Sorry about that. Okay, so you can adjust your fall off there. If we just reduce the size of that shape. If I double click on this node and then single click on this node, uh, I can preview what I'm doing. So as you can see, we can get a fall off there. And of course you can get more complicated with it. You can add in more noise to your um, fall off but 
you know, this is what we're going to do today. There we go. So, <clears throat> once that's done, uh, we're ready. So, I'm just going to save my package. Uh, I'll call it Flower Alpha. Let's double click on our uh, graph name <coughs> or our identifier. I'll call that Flower Alpha 2 so I don't get confused. Not a Fowler Alpha. This isn't EastEnders. There we go. And now I can publish this. So if I publish the SBSAR, that's to my textures directory where I put more or less everything. And uh, I can generate a missing icon, but it doesn't seem to do anything. I think it might do something in the background uh, and then hit publish. So now in Substance Painter, I can go and find my new SBSAR. Did that not publish? Did I miss something? Let's just resave that and then publish again. Ah, it's there, it's just not coming up. That's okay. Right click, uh, open file location. There's my SBSAR. It's Windows being crazy with me. There's no point dragging it onto there, John. We'll drag it into here. So, once I drag it into here, we can set the type, and I want this to be an alpha, and let's in, uh, put it in my library, and click import, and it should then import and come up with a lovely alpha. So there we go, I have a new alpha, and it's you know ready to be used. And of course you can experiment in Substance uh, Designer, you can make all sorts of crazy shapes. Um, and I deeply suspect we can even expose parameters to give it some uh, variation. So I hope you found that useful and I'll talk to you in another session.